Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's have a look at another example of how to solve a second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So here's our differential equation. We know it's a second order one because the highest derivative in the equation is the second derivative over here. It's non-homogeneous because it is equal to some function. You'll see this is different from the ones we've done before because here you've got a product of functions and we'll come to that when we solve our particular integral. So we know our solution is going to be made up of the complementary function plus our particular integral. So for a complementary function, we know if we write this in the operator form, our equation looks like that, that we're working with. And d squared minus 4 equals to 0 is the auxiliary equation, right? The solution of this is going to be plus or minus 2. So our roots are real and different, which means the complementary function is going to be a, e, to the 2x, b e to the minus 2x, right? So that's our complementary function. Now, for our particular integral, we can write our differential equation like this, pi minus 4y pi, and that has to equal x e to the x. And we have to choose our trial function so that if you find the first derivative and the second derivative and you substitute it into your differential equation, your equation has to balance. So like I said before, we're working here with a product. So you have to break your product up. This part here is linear. That part there is exponential. Right? So that means your trial function has to be made up of the same parts. So if that's linear, we can write that part cx plus d times e to the x. Our first derivative, I just scooted it over a little bit because this is a product, which means we need to use the product rule for differentiation. And that is the derivative of our first part, which is just going to be c times the second part, which is that, plus cx plus d e to the x. Because e to the x, the derivative of that just stays the same. d squared is going to be the derivative here stays the same. The derivative of your second term is going to be using the product rule for differentiation. So it's the def derivative of your first part, which is going to be c e to the x plus c x plus d e to the x. Because the derivative again of e to the x is just e to the x. So I'm going to simplify it a bit more so that we can, it's just easier to work with. d e to the x. And then we're going to substitute into our equation. I'm going to call it equation 1. So we substitute into 1 and we'll get, push this up a bit so you can see, 2 c e to the x, c x e to the x, d e to the x minus 4 uh, e to the x times cx plus d, and that has to equal x e to the x. Okay, so now let me just expand that and simplify it a bit so we can see what our terms are, because we remember that the equation has to balance, right? Which means that all the like terms have to add up to one another. That has to equal, it's just that. Okay. Just make sure that all of that is right. Okay. So now we have to add up our like terms. So our like terms are going to be the e to the x terms there and there. And then we've got x e to the x terms as well. So let's look at the x e to the x terms first. And that is this one, this one, and that one. 
So it means if the because we have an equation cxex minus 4cxe to the x has to equal xe to the x. So it means c minus 4c has to be equal to 1, which means we've got minus 3 equals 1, which means that c has to be negative a third. Okay, then our other term is going to be the e to the x term. So it's this one, that one, and that one. Right? Let me put that on another page just so we can see what we're doing. Okay. So we need to have 2c e to the x plus d e to the x minus 4d e to the x has to equal to 0 because you don't have that term. See here, you don't have that term on the right hand side. Okay, so that means we have 2c minus 3d has to equal to 0. So minus 3d must equal minus 2c. We know that c is minus a third. So minus 3d has to be minus 2 minus a third which means that d is going to be, what's that, positive 2 over 3, so it is 2 over 9, right? So then our ypi is going to be minus a third x, this must be minus, hey? Yeah, minus 2 over 3 e to the x, okay? Then, our final answer, as we said before, has to be made up of our complementary function plus our particular integral, right? And we remember our complementary function is here, right? So we take that one, a e to the 2x, b e to the minus 2x, e to the x right and that over there would be your general solution now you can tidy this up if you want to um, you can multiply them up or rearrange them just so that they look a little bit neater it's completely up to you and it also depends on what you want to do with that solution okay well i hope you understood about how to solve a product where your, your f of x is a product. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.